Jonathan over at American Off-Road Customs. Uh, we just got back from Trail Hero last week. Um, if you follow us, I'm sure you saw some of the videos we put out for being out there. It was an awesome event. Unfortunately though, because we were in such a rush to get everything done and get out there, we never had a chance to talk about this build that we were working on. And we did a couple videos and like some pictures and stuff posting, talk about some of the progress we did on this. But now that it's, it's put together and it's running, it's still not 100%. There's still, obviously there's a bumper missing. So a couple things we're still waiting on to uh, get this 100% done. Show you what we did. Um, so that way you get an idea of like what the end result is of all that work we did. And just in case you're wondering, it did perform extremely well out on the rocks. Uh, Scott, uh, who's the owner of this Jeep, is very happy with it and says that it's, it's fantastic and much improved over where he was at. this was sitting before it was on a um, just a long arm um, a metal cloak kit which is a very good TJ bolt-on kit for that you can get for your TJ doesn't require any real custom work to put that on there and it does give you like a four and a half inch lift so you can fit 37 inch tires and you can do a lot with that lift Fortunately for Scott, he wanted to do more and it was just, he kind of outgrew what that lift was enabling to do and he really wanted 40s and it just was a little too uh, short of a wheelbase to do that. So what we did, and I'll kind of start at the front, we'll work our way around. Um, first and foremost is this right here. So most TJs, they have a, a steering gear box that's kind of tilted down. So this front section right here actually hangs down below here. And this is a kit made by TNT Customs. And what this allows us to do is relocate the position of the steering gear. So now the pitman arm is straight this way instead of angling down here. So it gives us more clearance and the ability to bring the ride height down while maintaining clearance with all that steering geometry. And when you do that, which is why it doesn't have a bumper, is because this big bulky bolt stuff up here doesn't fit with a lot of uh, bumpers on the market and the one he had didn't fit anymore. So we got one on the way that will, but it's just not here yet. Uh, but down here, so he has, uh, this is a PSC Ram. It's all painted to kind of match everything. Um, we got fabricated steering components. So we made the tie rod, the drag link, the track bar, uh, all the steering, all the links that are on the suspension. We made all those in house. Um, you know, we have a two benders. We're able to bend this to make sure it clears everything appropriately. And this is a JK axle. So this is a Dana 44 under here, if you're wondering. Um, it's got tubed, it's, or it's sleeved, it's trussed, it's gusted, it's got chromoly shafts in there. He's running a 488 gear set in this uh, with these 40 inch stickies that he's got on here. Uh, so coming around the side here, I'll pop the hood so you can kind of see underneath what we did in a second. So we did a coilover conversion from the traditional spring and shock setup. And in doing this, you know, we had to modify a lot of his fender stuff. So we put these uh, four coil buckets in here. So these are uh, 14 inch coilovers all the way around um, with the reservoirs. So this is all supporting all that stuff in there. This is removable so you can take this out, and pull the engine if you had to, which he keeps talking about doing a V8 swap, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I know he wants one, everybody wants one, but you know, it's a lot of money to put into this stuff. Um, so this is kind of like how all this is in here. We have to kind of move some stuff around to get it all to fit in there the way it needs to so it all works well. But this is a stock 4.0. I think he's got like 200 plus thousand miles on this thing, but it's still moving strong, still working good for him for now. So we'll see how long that lasts until he needs his upgrade. While we uh, move towards the back, we'll take a stop and I'll show you the interior area. Because one of the things we did with his upgrade was we put a Atlas uh, two-speed transfer case in this thing. So it's got a twin stick control. So now he can control the front and rear drive, drive lines independently. So we come around here, I'll show you that. So that's what these are. So this gives you the ability to control the 
rear drive rear axle and the front axle independently which allows the ability to do a lot of technical crawling uh, when you start to get in some of those harder obstacles you really need to be able to do a front dig where the front drive is spinning but the rear axle is not so you can kind of pivot yourself around and pull yourself up and over things so it gives you a lot of ability to do things and this is fitted into a Genrite uh, center console setup for TJ that they make um, and then we custom cut all the holes and stuff in here to be able to put in all of his switches, his transmission control, locker controls. If you want a, a little auxiliary power port there. I think this is his horn right here. Um, so yeah, that's all this stuff. He's even got some cup holders back there. So, and then moving back, the cargo area, which is not very much of a cargo area anymore. Because of what we did, which I'll show you in a second, on the back end of this, the fuel cell no longer fits in the back underneath the factory location. So that's what this is. This is his new 20 gallon fuel cell. This is a Genrite tank with their cover. So it keeps it all nice and clean. Um, fill it right here. That over there is his um, EVAP canister. So it's all still emissions compliant. He can pass smog if he needs to. So there's no issues with any of that. And we kind of attached some of his other parts to his Jeep to this. So on this side, this is his uh, up down air system, which we just plumbed right here so his ports are on each side easy to get to air compressors right here easy to access so it's all very you know utility in the sense that it's all about function you know and it works well he still has room to put like a toolbox back here and some extra fluids and stuff like that and then his shock towers i'll open this up so you can see this are, are right here coming through the tub and these are really far back which kind of explains this Right, so this is our rear axle position, which used to be way up here. So this thing has been stretched quite a bit in the rear. We weren't able to stretch the front as much as we wanted, so we're only about a 109 wheelbase, which is still pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the fact that this tire sticks out a good like two, three inches beyond the end of this thing uh, makes this thing be able to climb pretty steep walls with almost no wanting to tilt back. It's very good. Now to be able to do that, we had to modify the frame quite a bit. So from about here back, we cut the old frame out. And then this is a moto built uh, back half kit that they offer. And it enables us to put the frame inboard and up out of the way of other components like coilovers, control arms, things like that. And it just makes doing the coil buckets and putting the coilovers in there a lot easier. You don't have to notch frames and French stuff in there as much, so it just makes the whole thing a lot easier to put together. Uh, and then to kind of finish it all off, this is a uh, Moto Built uh, rear corners, uh, their fender flares, and their sliders. We got like a Genrite panel here and a metal cloak panel there, so we kind of <laughs> had to, you know, make a couple adjustments to make sure all that stuff kind of fit together. So, yeah, that's, uh, I believe that's most everything that we did on this round. Uh, as we make more changes and upgrades in the future, we'll talk about them. If you see something in the video that I didn't talk about, or you have questions, or you're like, well, why did you guys do this, or how does that work, or whatever, just uh, hit us up in the comments. We'll do our best to uh, answer those questions for you. And uh, if this is something you want to do for your Jeep, uh, just, you know, come by, give us a call, and we can make this happen for you, too. So talk to you soon.